Hello, welcome to another guest video. I'm super excited about this. Um, I'm trying to do this more and more and I have more guests here in the studio today. And the first one that I'm going to introduce you to in this video is Sarah Drasner. And Sarah is a web technologist. She does a lot of work with JavaScript, a lot of JavaScript libraries that I know nothing about, including uh, Mode.js, which has made this particular uh, visualization, which is exactly what she's going to build in the video. So if you like what you see behind me, that's what you're going to learn how to do. Um, Sarah works, uh, speaks at a lot of conferences and teaches at conferences and she works with Val Head to and, and travels internationally to do uh, uh, web animation workshops. And if you want to find out more, you can go to webanimationworkshops.com. So check out their workshop series, check out their, uh, their websites, and check out this tutorial that you're about to watch. Thanks. So as Dan mentioned, I'm Sarah Drasner. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about Mo.js. Mo.js is an animation library for the web and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work with it today um, using JavaScript and then under the hood it's actually going to be drumming up a lot of SVG which is really cool. SVG is scalable vector graphics. Um, so we actually don't need the HTML pan, uh, panel here. We just need the JavaScript panel. Um, I'm leaving the CSS panel open for you so you can see that I'm working with body background, you know, it's dark black base or dark gray basically. Um, but that's basically all we're going to be doing in that panel too. Um, I also already have loaded this mo.js min, you know, um, here. And if you go look at this pen later, you can fork it and grab that that link. Um, I'm also going to work with Babel so that I can, or Babel, I don't know, <laughs> so that I can work with um, some JavaScript preprocessing and do some uh, work with ES6 today. Um, so basically, we're going to do a burst. Um, bursts are really, really fun because they're so simple. Um, and you can drum up something really beautiful really easily. So we're going to just say const burst here equals new mojs dot burst and then inside here we're going to say radius if I can type um, is inside of another object 0 to I don't know 360 and then what we can do even from here is just play it and see what we've got so if I hit play you can see that I already have something just bursting across the, sc the screen. It's these little pink dots. That's really cool. Um, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. We've got circles so far, but I can actually talk to the children of these like little units. We saw we have about five of them. And I can say, you should be a shape that's maybe erect. And then maybe you should have a longer duration, because we're actually having a hard time seeing all of the stuff that's coming up here. So I'm going to give it 3,000 seconds, 3,000 milliseconds, sorry. Um, and then you can see it burst apart, which is really cool. Um, so that's just the beginning of what we can do. We can actually start to add other shapes here. So you saw before we have a circle. Um, and uh, you can see that it's kind of pink from the get-go. Um, we can also make them a little bit bigger. So maybe we should make the, and this is a different kind of radius. So the radius of the of the burst is actually like how big the burst is, but the radius of the children is going to be how big those shapes are. So maybe we'll change them in this object. It, once we put an object in here, we can do 30 to 5, and then I need a comma here in order to make it work. And then you can see it's like a big burst that's way, way cool. Um, so then I can change it to whatever I want. There's a lot of different kinds of shapes in Mo.js right out of the box. So we might change it to something like a cross. Um, but the interesting thing is you'll see it disappear because crosses don't have a fill and we're working with the fill. So instead we're going to give a stroke. And what's cool about that is we can say stroke is, you know, teal. Oh, I'm going to do consistent, you know, uh, kind of things here. And then we've got these crosses that kind of boom across the screen. We can even change the stroke width while it's moving. So let's do, we have to do camel casing here. And we'll do, let's say, uh, six, two, zero. And then we can see it kind of like burst out and be big and then get smaller. Um, might be nice if it kind of rotated as it goes across. So we can even put in an angle here and do from like 
360 to 0. And then we can see it kind of like shattering apart. We can change the number of children, which is nice. So we can do count um, and do something like 20 all of a sudden. And then it's like a tons of things that are just bursting across. That's really, really fun. Um, so that's like a basic mo.js mo burst, but maybe we want to do more than one. Maybe we want to make it kind of interesting here as it goes. So I'm actually going to get rid of this play for just a second, and I'm going to say new timeline equals mo.j. Oh, no, I want to say const. Sorry about that const timeline equals new mo.js timeline. And then I can make it do things like repeat, which is nice because then we can kind of continually see it as it goes along. And then I'm also going to make sure that I play it because we want to play it. But we also have to add in this burst that we have. So we'll do add, and then we say burst. And now, Oh, we need a dot here. And now you can see the burst kind of appearing, and also it's going to keep going. So we can also just start adding other shapes here if we want. So we can copy all of what we have here and say const burst 2, const add burst 2. And now there's going to be two of them. And that maybe we'll make them a little bit different so you can see that the difference between these. So this one's going to be magenta. And this one's count is going to be 10, or maybe like 12 or something. And maybe we'll put this in another direction so that we can see the difference between those two things kind of bursting apart, right? Um, so we got negative 360. Now one's going one way and one's going the other way. That's kind of fun. Um, and now they're scattering across the screen. That's kind of nice. Um, we can also change this from a cross to something else, like a zigzag. That's cool. And now we have like a totally different shape moving across. That's really like kind of interesting as it like morphs and moves. So we can also change the color as it's, as it's going across just by putting it in that other object. So we can do magenta to pink. Pink is kind of like a lighter color. Um, so it'll change as it's going. So cool. We can also just like, we can see that there's like that you know, default pink in there, that's because the zigzag actually has a default fill. So we're going to say fill none here. And then we can see the zigzag go across. And that's going to have a default of three points. But zigzags are really cool when they have lots of points. So maybe we'll do points, you know, seven or something like that. And then we have these zigzags that have like all of this character. It's really, really fun. Um, so we can also play with opacity, right? R right now, we're just kind of having them scale out to infini infinity. Um, but we can also say something like opacity is, you know, 1, 2, 0. And then we need our comma there. And then we can actually watch that pink kind of go away as it, as it kind of moves off the screen. Maybe we want, we want to do something else, too, because we've got right now we've got these pretty big radiuses. So maybe I'll change this one to 100. Oops, that's 1,000. Um, that's really big. Um, and then this one we'll do 200. So we can see them kind of like blowing apart a little bit differently each time. That's really fun, too. Um, so right now, we have two different shapes kind of bursting. Maybe we want to kind of accent it with a circle that's just one circle that's kind of blowing apart. So the way that we would do that is pretty similar to what we had before, but it would be a shape. So we'd say const circ equals new mojs.shape. And it's all pretty much the same syntax over and over again. So you can kind of see that it would be like a circle here. And I'm going to say, uh, do the same thing where we're like, radius is from 0 to you know, 200. And we're also going to say, let's say um, we don't want to fill because we just want the outline. So we'll say fill none. And then we'll say stroke is going to be maybe yellow. So that's kind of fun. So now we don't see it yet, right? Because we've got to add it here. So we'll add it in. 
and then we get to see what happens. So right now, it's kind of going really fast. Remember how we talked about how the, like the default is for it to go pretty quickly. I think it's 250 milliseconds. So we'll also make the duration of this pretty much longer. So we'll do 3000 here. And then it kind of blows apart the same way. Maybe we'll make it a little bit different front so that it's not overlaying on the crosses. So we can do 300, 3,500 um, milliseconds here. So that's kind of nice. We also might want to do like an opacity from zero to one, um, like we had with the other one, or I mean one to zero. So then we have it blowing apart this way. So that's kind of nice. So now we have this like circle that's kind of blowing out at the same time, but it might be nice to have two circles. It might be nice to have like a circle and then another circle coming out at the same time. Um, so right now we have a bunch of things that we might want to reuse. We have our radius, we have our fill that's none, we have our stroke that's yellow, uh, we have the opacity from zero to one. We might want to keep like all that stuff. So what we can do instead is you know make some default options since we've got our um, ES6 in here we can actually use a thing called the spread operator which is a really really nice thing so I'm gonna take this circ and I'm gonna call it const circ opt instead and then I'm gonna say that this is an object instead so the nice thing here is I can say const circ because that's what we had before, is new mojs.shape, like we did before. And we can do these three dots, which is the spread operator, and we can say circ underscore opt. And then what will happen is it will start to use those options from before. That's really, really sweet, because now we can just make a second one. We'll, we'll call it circ2. We can add those options, and then I'm going to add a slight delay on this one. So then we can add it here, and we have two circles really, really fast, because we have all of those options that we're able to reuse, and we can override some of them, we can change some of them, so that's really, really fun. Um, and then for the last thing that we're going to do, we're probably just going to do like the, those base circles again, just one last base circle. So well, let's go back and take one of these bursts that we have here. And maybe we're just going to make something very, very similar to this. But we're going to take out some of these fill none, stroke stuff. We're going to take out the zigzag because remember the default is that children um, are always going to be circles. So instead we're going to say burst three and then we're going to give it a different count of, let's say, five. And then, let's see, what color should we make it? Let's say color um, purple. And then we can add burst three in here. So now you can see it's like giant, and then it's getting smaller. But maybe we want to make them a little bit more subtle, because they're super big. Um, so maybe for the radius for the verse 3, we could say something like, um, let's go for 15 to 10. Let's see how that looks. That's better. That's kind of like not so bad. But maybe we want to make it just like a little more subtle than that. So let's do, oh, and we don't need the stroke width in there. And then we have a radius of 10, and we're going to make it go to 5. So basically, everything in these objects, we're interpolating the values of. All of the things that we're using, the angle, the radius, the opacity, we're going from 1 to 0 every single time we use one of those objects, and we're passing it. Um, for everything else, like the duration, it stays stable. So we can just use that over and over again. So if I wanted to refactor this, these bursts, I could find things that were common for all of them. I think maybe they don't have so many things in common, though. Um, so it might not be possible. But you can see what we did with that circ opt, where we just basically used those, those same options over and over again. And those, that spread operator in ES6 really helps with that. And that's really, really awesome. That timeline's great, too, because we can just keep adding things. And we know that they're all going to repeat at the same time together, which is really, really fun. So if we look at this in my like little code open 
thing that opens it immediately in DevTools as a Chrome extension, um, you can see all of these things bursting apart whenever um, it plays. So that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching and um, thanks for tuning in. Bye.